containing Chapter 2, made Federal character unenforceable. The Valarian share of the ball and other assets to the far not through a Federal account sharing process that was exclusively weighted to favor the far not and make corruption official. Let me take you back over two decades of our journey. It all started when the military regime of General Abdul Salami Aboka imposed a unitary 1999 constitution, which in turn was a wholesale rival of the 1979 constitution that was also known to be a victory charter for the Nigeria Biafra War of 1967 to 1970. When it was made public a few weeks after the inauguration of General Passenger as president, the better half of those in the legal profession gathered in several conferences and without much ado, recognized the flaws, loopholes, and selfish intentions, and concluded that the constitution was not legitimate and would not lead Nigeria to any form of advancement. It was important that the mechanism of vehicle to set up a countrywide rejection of this forgery of a constitution was put in place. The journey commenced when, in 2004, the Pro-National Conference Organization, PRONACO, was established to rework the damaged federal constitutional basis of Nigeria. PRONACO being the People's Sovereign and National Conference of Ethnic Nationalities in Nigeria, conveyed in all ethnic nationalities, and quickly mandated its representation to go back to their people and to come with ratified draft of how they would want to participate in the Union of Nigeria. The conference sat in plenaries across the cities of Lagos, Otakat, Enugu, Jaws, and Kanda, then returned to Lagos for the final sitting and in participation conveyors in the likes of Anthony Ehanuro, Olesho Inka, Chuku Emeka Odumeko, Chuku, and similar leaders across the territories. This resolution was an agreement derived from the Composite People's Constitution as presented and defended by every nationality's representation in no sequential conference. And it is important to know that there were observers from the international community, including the US and European Union observers. In August 2006, a delegate from Castina moved the motion for adoption of the draft People's Constitution that had made from the 29-point resolution of the conference. In furtherance of the political consensus to restore the federal basis of the Nigerian Union, in 2007, the movement for a new Nigeria was set up as an enforcement of the consensus and at the time to exclude the 12 contiguous northern states that had introduced and embraced the Sharia legal system against a secular basis for Nigeria. The allies had insisted that the democracy and Sharia system could not coexist in the same political space, hence the need for a new vehicle and the movement for new Nigeria. On the 23rd of May 2007, MMN issued its legal counsel for a suit by the Federal High Court of Abuja to challenge the legitimacy of the imposed 1999 constitution seeking the termination of the entire constitution. At the court hearings, which have the Attorney General of the Federation representing the federal government, legal representation of the National Assembly and others admitted the people case which they could not defend the challenge, but insisted that the plaintiff had no workers standing. In English, the plaintiff had no status at law to bring in the case to challenge the legitimacy of the 1999 constitution. Having acknowledged that the restoration of the people's sovereignty did not need the participation of permission of government, the joint multi regional vehicle instituted the MMN, Lagos Declaration, 30th of June 2011, by which the Allies' partner blocks the Lord Niger, South South, 
and southeast. Here of land, and the middle gods publicly rejected the caliphate in June's 1999 constitution, mandating regional self-determination actions which included referendum and international outrage. In accordance with the mandates of the MMN Lagos Declaration, the people of the Lord Niger on the 27th of April 2015 held the solemn assembly in Port Harcourt City to only repudiate the 1999 constitution. In that assembly, the 1885 ethno linguistic map of the Lower Niger was adopted as a geographical basis of federating. The assembly mandated the distillation of character of, res- of relationship as well as asset protection and guarantee scheme to protect the asset of an indigenous people in other blocks of Nigeria. On the mandate for international outrage of the MNN Lagos Declaration, an LNCT visited Capitol Hills, Washington, to make a case for the termination of the operation of Nigeria's 1999 constitution at a special congressional event for Nigeria in May 2015. The team also made informal consultation for the same matter at the UN headquarters in New York in the same year. Two years later, still in furtherance to mandate of the MN Lagos Declaration, the Yoruba indigenous people held the Yoruba Solemn Assembly at Ibadan on the 7th of September 2017. The assembly publicly repudiated the 1999 constitution as the basis of the Federation of Nigeria and proclaim the self-determination right of the Yoruba land to reclaim autonomy of the Yoruba land. Then a year later, on the... Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. And uh, I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. This is Ninas, the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, and you are all welcome. We have an exciting day for you today, and uh, I am glad to see so many faces that joined early, and I hope that you were getting some information from that video that was played, because that was a story of the journey that, that lots of people have started. A lot of them are no longer here, but it in no way diminishes the impact that they have had on this journey that we are on and that we will finish successfully. So welcome again. And we have a lot that that we are planning for today. Please, if you are not called upon to speak, do please keep your lines muted. Do please keep your lines uh, muted. Uh, We have a lot of information to provide to you today. Um, Again, Nina's is an alliance. It's an alliance from the middle belt to the south. So it's got the Middle Belt Forum in it. It's got the Lower Niger, which is the Southeast and the South South. And it's got the Yoruba uh, land or nation in there as well. And why is this so important? Why is this critical at this time? Well, I'm sure all of you heard or saw the news about the doubt that Buhari talked about. Because he wanted to collapse. He wanted to collapse this movement into the dot that existed back in 1966. But Nina's is the dot expander. It has blown open that dot so that the majority can take the rightful place, can put that rightful stake for their ancestral lands, for their assets, for their freedom, for their progress. That's what Nina says, and that's what all of you here are, and that's why you're here. So welcome again, Um, and again today we're going to be talking about what is coming up, right? We'll talk a little bit about what Nina has done, then we will talk a little bit about what's the impact of that, and then we'll talk about the Million Man March, because I'm sure all of you are here, and you're excited to hear about that, and you're also excited to hear the things that are going to be upcoming. So, I am going to introduce a couple of people that are going to be a part of the process here. Uh, Shailun is here, and he is with uh, Ilana. 
And so he's going to be part of the um, discussion as we uh, move along. And uh, we are going to open up different uh, uh, sections where, um, you know, where people can ask questions and where people can make comments. But we are going to unfortunately limit that to a very short period of time, you know, like a minute. So um, I am um, just letting everyone right now just write down your questions, okay? Write down your questions so that you can make it very tight so that we can keep the time. We don't want to be here for very long uh, because we know that the, your Saturdays are important to you. And so uh, please write it down. And then for those of you who are shy, you can put your questions in the chat. And we will, um, as time permits, we will ask those questions here and provide the answers. Uh, but we've got a group of people, again, who are uh, in the audience that will be answering those questions. We've got Donald, who's from the, uh, from the South South. He is going to be part of the team answering those questions. And um, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people because you know, a lot of people are coming uh, uh, coming on uh, right now. But uh, never fear, your questions are going to uh, get answered. So I think that to kick it off, um, I'm going to make a quick check. Just give me a minute. Let me just make a quick check with Donald. and see where he is at. And then we can continue. Uh, but I am going to be waiting for the signal for when uh, the... Um, leaders start coming on board and we will you know always kind of pause to um to deal with that just because you know there's a lot of um, issues these days it appears with connection to nigeria so we're going to get started and then as they come on board and they get notified so shayun and donald etc make sure you guys let me know when you see them uh because um i am not able to see that i think that Prof has signed up. Is that correct, Shaun? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. awesome. That is fantastic. Um, one of the things that we want to be able to do is to be able to get them on as soon as they get on, just so that we don't have those issues with connection. So um, I'm just going to, um, Shaun, if you can confirm that he is actually ready to start, then that way um, I will let you introduce him. Okay, and then uh, we can, um, and then we can get started and get him on. And I'm just going to, I know you're trying to admit people, and I know Donald is doing the same. I'm going to help out because a lot of people uh, are chiming in, and so we uh, have a lot of people coming aboard. So, uh, Sharon, if he is ready, um, we can actually uh, get started with that piece of it, and you can introduce him. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, wherever you are joining us from. Um, our leader is ready, uh, Professor Bandia Kintoy. It's already here. And I can confirm to you, he's ready. Baba, are you there, yes, sir? Can you hear? Yes, I, I am. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I greet you all. I greet you all with hope and pride. Amen. Oh, yes, hope that we are going to walk and get our nation liberated from the squalor of Nigeria very soon. And uh, pride that I'm working with the, with the strong young man who want to get it done. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be among you. I'm very proud of you all. Awesome. Thank you very much, Prof. And um, I know everyone is excited to hear about uh, the bold steps that Nina is taking and also I'm sure they're also willing to uh, ready to hear from you about this alliance and how it's coming together so if you can give us some words around that that would be fantastic oh, okay well uh, we the person to really thank most for this alliance uh, is Tony Nadi he, from his position as a, an erudite lawyer, he looked at our problems and the Constitution. And he came to the uh, very clear and easily visible conclusion that our problem in the South and the Middle Belt 
are all wrapped together in the 1999 constitution. That is why some people claim that they have a right to be in our land, to kill, to maim, to destroy. And why the government of Nigeria is telling us that they do have a right to be there. That's one. Uh, that's also the reason. It's uh, the, the 1999 uh, constitution is also the reason that the resources of our parts of Nigeria are being wrapped together and given to the north, essentially to the north. And uh, when we complain that, that it is the dictate of the 1999 constitution, they say we have uh, uh, given our people over to Nigeria under the 1999 constitution. We have given the resources of our land. We have given our loyalty. I said everything to Nigeria on the basis of the 1999 constitution. And so, everyone, please mute your line. Mute your line. Everyone, please mute your line. Sorry, Prof. Oh, thank you. And so Tony sat down and had a good look at uh, this 1999 constitution, this monster called the 99, and discovered that if we can get rid of it, we can get, we can, uh, we can retrieve our freedom, we can retrieve our self determination, we can retrieve our dignity as peoples, and uh, we have been trying to put it together. The big question was how are, how are we to proceed? So we decided that all the oppressed peoples of Nigeria, the indigenous peoples of Nigeria, from the Middle Belt to the Atlantic Ocean, uh, are unified in suffering and deprivation in Nigeria. And that what we need to uh, for strength is to create an alliance and so we walk through us an alliance. And I'm very happy that we do have the alliance. Because now it has become a very major force in the struggles of our peoples. Uh, we, are, we are ready to go as far as it's necessary to retrieve our freedom. We took the first major step in December 2020. Mm -hmm. In December 2020, when we came before the, the Nigerian people and before the world to proclaim that the 1999 Constitution is a fraud, that we are no, we are not bound by it because we were not part party to the making of it, and that uh, we were going to take step after step after step until we totally language ourselves. Uh, they thought we were joking. Then uh, two months, three months later, we, we, we gathered in a bar, and we took the next step. And a week or so ago, we took the next step. So we are progressing steadily, logically, legally, and sustainably to work for the liberation and dignity of our people under the ages of NENAS, Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination. The basis, the basis of our action are simply that a minority in the north led by the Fulani and bolstered up by a subdued people, the Hausa. Mm -hmm. All, both of them together constituting a minority in Nigeria have, have, have uh, appropriated unto themselves 
all the powers and benefits of state in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They control the powers of state at the federal center. And they use that to do a whole lot of horrible things to us. Uh, I want you to know that uh, this is a continuation of the old trouble of the yes, of the uh, uh, Asiatic Western Asiatic peoples pressing down on the black peoples of Africa. Mm -hmm destroying the creators of the ancient civilization of Egypt and perpetually pushing the black peoples further and further south. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Muammar Gaddafi in one, uh, in one uh, yeah, Arab conference said, listen, let the... Uh, more than two thirds of us Arabs are already in Africa. Let the remaining one third leave and come and join us. Because Africa is the labenstrom for the for the for, for, for the Arabs. The living space for the Arabs. That is the attitude that uh, peoples like uh, the Fulani who are some, some, uh, who, who claim some connections with the Arabs, so that uh, the Amadou Bello said that he was a grandson of uh, Prophet Muhammad. We, are, we respect Prophet Muhammad for what he did for the world. We respect the religion of Islam. But we do not respect people who are using it as a tool to subdue and destroy peoples. Mm -hmm. And so we refuse to bow down to the subjugation by the Fulani, bolstered up by the, uh, by the uh, demographic numbers of them. The house the oppression and that they are going to get out of the oppression. Uh, when they are ready, we will be ready to... Connectivity issue, be patient, he's gonna come back. Five. Well, we are working to get we have pushed the government off our shoulders to some extent now. Yep. Our governors, if they would do, if they would use what we have already created for them, can put the uh, the, uh, the federal government in Abuja off their shoulders. Mm -hmm. We know that they do not have that half of courage. But we will go on nevertheless. Yep. The truth will, will win in the end. And God will be glorified. Thank you very much. That's Nina's, an alliance of the Yoruba of the Southwest, of the Igbo of the Southeast, of the many peoples of the South South, and the many peoples of the Middle Belt, all together amounting to about 75% of the population of Nigeria. And the, uh, and the territorial land of Nigeria. So we are not a minority. <laughs> we take strength in our str uh, in our largeness and yes. our majority. As uh, 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 we we in uh, in a, in in a time of trouble in the southwest used to say to people who thought they could subdue us. Only the bigger fish can swallow the smaller. Mm -hmm. The bigger fish is now in the process of liberating itself and pushing the smaller fish away. Yeah. God bless you all. God bless the Ninas. 
God bless the minority peoples of the Middle Belt. God bless the peoples of the South South. God bless the Igbo nation. Thank you very much. You are muted. You are muted. Thank you, uh, Pra, for that uh, very, very uplifting uh, message. I am not going to uh, uh, be saying much right now, but I'm going to ask everyone to mute, mute your line. Thomas Mancole, please mute your line. Everybody, please mute, mute your line. We do have the Secretary General of Ninas, uh, uh, Barrister Tony Nadi. Uh, Thomas Mancole, please mute your line. So, we do have um, uh, Tony Nadi, and I am going to ask him, there's a lot of people here, so uh, Donald, if you can find him, or Sharon, if you can find him, to ask him to mute his line. I think we, we have to, uh, that would be awesome. There you are. Okay, Tony, you are welcome. And um, uh, Prof, if you can please stay on so that uh, I'm sure there's going to be a couple of questions for the both of you. Thank you very much, Tony. You are quite welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, welcoming everybody and uh, special greetings to Prof. <laughs> we, I'm just, uh, you can see I'm in motion. I just came out from uh, a meeting, go uh, ahead into another meeting almost uh, uh, 40 kilometers from where <laughs> I said I'm from. Uh, but thank God for technology, we're able to connect uh, at this time. Yes, uh, I, I second all of what Prof has said concerning where things are now. And um, I just want to tell our people that we have defeated this monster. The monster is struggling to see whether there is a way it can uh, get his uh, bearings back. And uh, that those bearings uh, relate to whether they're going to drag our people towards elections or to create a kind of, you know, intimidate some. Uh, all kinds of things are being thrown around. And um, I'm sure most of us saw the interview in which uh, the Commodore was uh, talking about who was responsible for what. Uh, the Commodore or, or, or Lawui. That was happening on a Wednesday, straight from the Friday where on AIT, uh, I had gone out, uh, you know, with uh, Professor Turaki. Nina's, uh, the, the, what the Nina's is saying was framed uh, by the KIT, and the uh, questions were put to us as to why uh, we getting the international community to, uh, the, to to shut down on Nigeria in terms of arms that were being supplied by the U.S. and its allies, and in terms of. Um, in terms of the loans, uh, the request loans that were being obtained in the name of Nigeria, the disputed project. And so, uh, like Prof already told us, Professor Kito already told us, we have actually, we have put in place a framework within which uh, we can we can exercise the power of that majority against this uh, minority that is refusing to reason, against this minority that is bent on killing off the owners of the land to take over the land. If anybody is still in any doubt as to the mission of uh, that minority, as to the ethnic cleansing going on, as to the mechanism by which they are able to do what they are doing as a, as, as, as a stranger minority, I, I, I am sure some of us had uh, uh, Professor Silver, the Vice President, talking about uh, apartheid. He's alleging on their behalf, just like he came to the U.S. to try to tell the Americans that no killings are taking place. Yemiya Shibajo is telling, is telling us that uh, in, in, in guarding ourselves as indigenous nationalities for, uh, and in an alliance for self-determination, that we were committing apartheid. I'm sure many people heard him yesterday. That will tell you that uh, the strategy of putting everybody together on one side against the ones who are killing in all these places, the Fulani that is killing in all the places. No Ijo is killing Yoruba people, no, no Ogun is killing their chief people, no Ibo is uh, killing uh, 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 people. So in all of it, 
uh, the what we have in place already puts them as the minority they are. What we have in place already locks down that constitution of 99 that empowers them in every way. What we have in place already made sense to the international stakeholders, the world powers and the powers that be. Even the UN in sending the, the, the rapporteur mission that came in 2019. What we have is enough to, 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 to break the hands that uh, held all our assets in terms of what the constitution sees from us. What we have is enough to put guns in our hands because it's that constitution that took the guns away from us. What we have is enough to get us to where we recover our land and our sovereignty. Since it is our signature that is sustaining that instrument by which that minority is doing what it's doing in our collective name. The Nigerian Union is dead. The Nigerian Union cannot be the, the, the that constitution cannot be the basis of people pointing guns at us and selling three million miles of crude oil every day and sharing the money in our name and coming to our spaces to to, to, to kill and terrorize mm -hmm. in the name of a Nigeria that is not our project under the constitution they impose on us. So that's the situation. Where we are now, the reason we are mobilizing everybody to come to, 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 to the rally in question so that the global, the world community can see and hear from us that our union as defined by that constitution is at an end. So that whatever we think, there's work going on inside Nigeria, there's work going on in several other locations, including Washington and elsewhere, so that what we're doing, people must stand by that proclamation. The, the, the demands of that proclamation is our demand. That we will not go to election under that constitution any further. That we must go into transition to begin to discuss what will become referendums to decide our future and all of that. The international community must see that seriousness. They, we, we can see what has happened in Afghanistan. That, uh, you know, we have the, the Taliban that had infused itself into the Taliban military, into the Afghan military. We are, we are, we are, we are closer to, we were closer to what has happened in Afghanistan uh, under the, the, the regime in which uh, the people who are the terror network uh, is being infused into our army. We, if we pretend about that, well, it's all about pretext. And so um, we just uh, encouraging everybody to realize that we have a golden opportunity to overcome. coming together. In which uh, we, can, we can exercise the power of that majority against this uh, minority that is refusing to reason, against this minority that is bent on killing off the owners of the land to take over the land. If anybody is still in any doubt as to the mission of uh, that minority, as to the ethnic cleansing going on, as to the mechanism by which they are able to do what they're doing as a, as, as, a, as a stranger minority. I, I, I am sure some of us had uh, uh, the vice president talking about uh, apartheid. He's alleging on their behalf, just like he came to the U.S. to try to tell the Americans that no killings were taking place. Yemiyo Shibajo is telling, is telling us that uh, in, in, in guarding ourselves as indigenous nationalities for uh, and in an alliance for self-determination that we were committing apartheid. I'm sure many people heard him yesterday. That will tell you that uh, the strategy of putting everybody together on one side against the ones who are killing in all these places, the full army that is killing in all the places. No, he is killing Yoruba people. No, no, is killing their chief people. 
No Igbo is uh, killing a uh, 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 black people. So in all of it, uh, the what we have in place already puts them as the minority they are. What we have in place already locks down that constitution of 99 that empowers them in every way. What we have in place already made sense to the international stakeholders, the world powers and the powers that be. Even the UN in sending the, the, the rapporteur mission that came in 2019. What we have is enough to, 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 to break the hands that uh, held all our assets in terms of what the constitution sees from us. What we have is enough to put guns in our hands because it's that constitution that took the guns away from us. What we have is enough to get us to where we recover our land and our sovereignty. Since it is our signature that is sustaining that instrument by which that minority is doing what it's doing in our collective name. The Nigerian Union is dead. The Nigerian Union cannot be the, 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 the that constitution cannot be the basis of people pointing guns at us and selling three million miles of crude oil every day and sharing the money in our name and coming to our spaces to to, to, to kill and terrorize mm -hmm. in the name of a Nigeria that is not our project under the constitution they impose on us. So that's the situation. Where we are now the reason we are mobilizing everybody to come to, 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 to the rally in question so that the global, the world community can see and hear from us that our union, as defined by that constitution, is at an end. So that whatever we, we, we there's work going on inside Nigeria, there's work going on in several other locations, including Washington and elsewhere, so that what we're doing, people must stand by that proclamation. The, the, the demands of that proclamation is our demand. That we will not go to election under that concern any further. That we must go into transition to begin to discuss what will become referendums to decide our future and all of that. The international community must see that seriousness. The, we, we can see what has happened in Afghanistan. That, uh, you know, we have the, the Taliban that had infused itself into the Taliban military, into the Afghan military. We are, we, are, we, are, we are closer to we were closer to what has happened in Afghanistan uh, under the, the the regime in which uh, the people who are the terror network uh, is being infused into our army. We, if we pretend about that, well, it's all about pretext. And so um, we are just uh, encouraging everybody to realize that we have a golden opportunity to overtake this monster if we if we do not seize that opportunity. They are also working their ways to see whether they can delay us a little and be able to deploy their own mechanism. It is the election of 2023, uh, whether we want to proceed towards that election under this country, because that will then be endorsing the black, that country, giving the country a new lease of life. And we can target to take down what is left inside the third quarter of 2021. Mm -hmm. not, not in 2023, inside 2021, the global community must wake up to realize that we have repudiated that concern and we say we will not go to any further elections under it. Once we do that, we are domino two in our roadmap. And that's it. From that day, we can pick up guns because that will be the day it becomes clear that uh, everything the concern held back from us, our access, our right to police our, uh, our areas, and all kinds of things will be, will, be, will be returned to us in the transition that will then follow. We decide what we'll do with the future. I think uh, it's just for us to understand that now, the international community must see us, must hear it from us, must they, we must see that we are determined, uh, you know, to proceed into our right to self determination as guaranteed by their instrument of 2007. Uh, that, that's uh, that's why I think I want to uh, hand it. Uh, awesome! Uh, that is absolutely great, and I think everyone, uh, even those who uh, did not. Um, know what was going on, got a lot from that. Uh, but can you uh, kind of speak a little bit to the nations? Because the, the questions that people ask is, you know, these are not nations, right? So we talk, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what were these nations, you know, those regions in, in the past, are those considered to be uh, nations? You know, do we have the right to self-determination? Can you just answer that? And then I'll go back to Prof to ask uh, another question. Yes, the uh, the way the way it is, um, the answer is a straight yes. 
the, the constituent component nationalities of Nigeria each has a right to self-determination. Let us get this straight. I was directly involved in the instrument that emerged from the UN in 2007. We had called a meeting of the owners of Nigeria, the ethnic owners of Nigeria, uh, the one that came out as uh, as Bonaco countrywide. We there were some Fulani, of course, that have been here for some time, and we said, okay, everybody come. The job came as a job, Yoruba came as Yoruba, Yoboni came as Oboni, Ibo came as Oboni, and we had this, uh, uh, you know, 2005-2006. These discussions that went from uh, from Lagos to Bonacot, uh to Enugu to Jos to Kano, coming back to Lagos, discussing the the union itself. Do we still want to continue in the union? And if yes, on what terms? And then we came out with an outcome. The Fulani were also in attendance that Buhari was part of the Fulani delegation that came to that meeting. Sayada Ibaka was part of Fulani, the one that is the Sokoto now, was a part of the, the Fulani delegation. The US sent us a mission as at that time. European Union sent us a mission as at that time. The, 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 the people who were angry enough to carry arms against Nigeria at the time were all persuaded. The Asaris of this world, the Canadians of this world. And so, by the time we finished, because we knew it would, it would boil down to the kind of thing we are now witnessing, we said we could solve it when government was delaying from calling a meeting. And so, from the time we finished, we were now thinking of the enforcement, what are we going to do to enforce this consensus? Because we all agree that it has to be a federation one more time. And it was in the preparation for the enforcement of that uh, new consensus that was like reviving our booty for everybody, that we now had to look in the direction of the UN to secure the right so that we're not accused of treason. And it was in that period that I had to, uh, I had to, I had to prevail on, I had to plead with, and uh, in fact, uh, it wasn't a big problem to request Professor Shoinka, Wole Shoinka, to go to his friend Kofi Annan at the UN, uh, so that that instrument that could help us uh, can be can be made uh, available at the time we will need it. Luckily, he went, and we were, we, we 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 succeeded in getting the UN to, you know, take a vote on the matter one more time, having secured the few countries they said we needed to secure, because the countries that had said the nation issues at home were, you know, all in an alliance to block that instrument that entitled us to what we seek. The relief we seek from Nigeria today is called self-determination. But it accrues to you if you are an ethnic, uh, you know, a distinct ethnic group in your ancestral space. And so we organized ourselves sufficiently to say, if the Yoruba standing on Yoruba land, Ijo standing on Ijo land, Ibo standing on Ibo land, Chief standing in Tibla, are all qualified. We only need to organize ourselves to approach the UN and the, and the, and the powers that be at the Security Council at the UN to say we we now want to exercise that right. Our constitution, uh, you know, uh, was imposed by a small a, a, a small segment, a small section of Nigeria, and they're killing us. Those, those are the things we we put in place. So that instrument called United Nations. Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples that came in 2007 is a remedy for the kind of thing we are complaining about in Nigeria. Our self nation have been confiscated in the constitution that we didn't make, but which is now basis for these strangers owning our assets, owning our lands, owning our lives, and killing us without consequence. And so that that UN instrument is very much available to us, and we have organized ourselves in a manner that has been discussed in the powers in the power places across the world. That was why the US, the EU, and the UK, between the 28th and 30th of uh, April, that was why they pointed Nigeria to that solution. They told Nigeria point blank that you can't you can resort to guns in this debate. We have raised the sovereignty dispute. The global community was telling Nigeria that in this dispute, your guns cannot feature, not your guns, not our guns. That a meeting of the owners of Nigeria become necessary for them to arrive at fresh legal instrument. The world powers have spoken to Abuja, and anybody who is being intimidated about what uh, the Fulani will do or the government of Nigeria will do should please dress back and look at what has happened between December 2020 and now. We have completed our consultations. The whole world now knows that Nigeria is a disputed country. <laughs> That's why that's why all the things that are happening. So I think I think uh, I think I'll leave it there, you know. Thank you.
very much, Tony. I, I think I, I'm doing happy at this to have been uh, picked up by, uh, I don't know, it's network or something, but it does not is uh, an intrusion that I had to take out the uh, intrusion. Um, I do not know if uh, we have, uh, if it's time for us to um, uh, take questions from a uh, few hands that are up for the Secretary General and the uh, Chairman to respond. Please, can we all mute our mics, those that are not speaking? Can we mute our mics, Peter? The host or the co-host can mute everyone. Yeah. Okay, so everyone is muted now. Um, my pen uh, is big, my pen is big, my pen is big, 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 pen is Okay, uh, Mr. Abel, please do not accept any more person without the original names. That's how you avoid those things. If they don't have our yeah. evil name, yeah, avoid accepting it, please. Yeah, we've been infiltrated, that's all. Yeah, okay. Um, then I'm going to suspend uh, admitting people for now while I mute everybody. And I, uh, for those that are going to be called to speak, I will only send you a request to admit. Uh, okay, we are going to start with us. Asad, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Are you there? Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good morning in some part of America. Um, my question to the two speakers. Um, I, first, I thank them for coming to give us this information. Uh, they are very, very um, informative, if I may. But my question to them is, We've been relying on these international communities for too long. And I just came back from home. I was in Nigeria for about a month. I had the opportunity of traveling to the Yoruba state, Lagos, Ogun, or your state. And I realized that this project that we are very, very serious about Majority of people in Nigeria are not even interested in the projects for reason best known to them. Are we going to continue to intensify our education of the people back home, or are we basically going to rely on the international community to help us get out of these doldrums? Thank you. Yeah, uh, if I'm allowed to take the question, can I moderate, please? Okay, Mr. You can go ahead, Mr. Tony. Right. Um, I'm inside. I'm inside that Nigeria, and uh, I can report to you. I can report to you that um, if you go back to we 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 had, you know, uh, a roadmap for how to execute the plans we had, and. Uh, in the period from December 16th of 2020, when we activated this uh, force majeure, not many people knew that anything was going on at all because it was basically 80% uh, covert. Most of what we were doing were, were being done, you know, uh, outside the view of the enemy that was wondering. The enemy didn't know that anything was going on. And because we had to preserve it to the point where everybody was ready to now come into this phase you know we didn't have to go shouting about that so our uh, people are also just now waking up to the fact that there is a there's a such a grand design bringing the whole of the south and the middle belt uh, on one side you know taking on that constitution that they created they didn't know that the constitution was a problem they thought it was the leadership they thought it was corruption they thought it was all kinds of things they didn't know it was the constitution that took a legislative from them they didn't know it was constitution that took uh, security from them. And so it was only after that uh, activation of the uh, force majeure um, in December of 2020 uh, that uh, we we came to the 90 days, we waited for the federal government, they rushed to the National Assembly, the 30 days, the state governors went to Asaba, they neither here nor there. And then the 120 days uh, that just passed, we we, we divided it into three of uh, sensitization, mobilization, and enforcement. 
we are not God uh, to say that we must finish this. This problem took over 250 years. From the time the enslavement the trade ended and people began to get into colonial you know, uh, ventures that led to a uh, Berlin conference of uh, coming to formalize all of that, you know, and everything that has happened from 1914 to date, to us as a country, as a, as a, as a, as people's, uh, 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 you know, locked in together here. This problem took over 250 years to create. And we dropped a, 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 we dropped a 20 year plan in 1999 to try to unravel it. And we have succeeded in unraveling that constitution. There's nothing that's going to save it except we go back to sleep. If we do just one more thing, to tell the global community that we're not going to elections under this. It's not uh, the matter of uh, how many people come to do rowdy things on the street. The meeting I'm coming from now was one in which we were having a physical meeting, but there were several other locations where people were people were monitoring, people were participating in that meeting from afar. So the technology available enables us to spread it. And uh, the whole plan, if we understand it, the whole plan is... Uh, is something that we just need to do the little we're asked to do. The question of uh, reliable... Am I still there? Yes, you are here. Sorry, I had to yes. mute everybody yes. again. So what, yes. What, what we needed, what we needed, we're not relying on the international community in the manner that is being suggested. We are doing what we need to do so that they can come to do what we, that they, they have to do for themselves. When we went to the U.S., we didn't tell them to come and save us from uh, from anybody. We told them that ISIS that was at war with them has come to our space and that our president is, is submitting the sovereign assets of Nigeria, including Nigeria's military arsenal, to them. And that uh, if the U.S. and the other people who are you know fighting the terror uh, will not uh, wake up in time that they, the global community will have to pay a big price. It was from that perspective that it became a national security question for the U.S. and its allies. And so we're not, we're not, we're not waiting for them because when, I, when we talk the way we talk, without looking at what exactly the whole uh, the framework and proposition is, uh, it becomes debilitated. We, we, have, we, have, we have sorted out what we need to do on our own side to take down that constitution. Our alliance is on that on the on, on track for taking down that constitution and what we need to do to get it to the point of lockdown that will then you know force the transition for how we go to referendum is all in our hands to do and therefore the international committee that we needed to talk to are the ones who have already blocked the sale of weapons to nigeria are the ones who already told nigeria that they must go to a dialogue of the people are the ones who have already told nigeria that uh, that uh, they can be, they, they already deny Nigeria law. They already treating the Nigeria as a disputed project, and so that's the much. Uh, that's what we have. And with what has happened in Afghanistan, the US did not listen to the locals at the time. But on our, on our own case, they listened to us for seven months in 2019. They have framed policy decisions on Nigeria that are adequate, you know, to solving this problem the way. We are, we are in control of it. They don't want to send boots on ground into foreign places. We knew that, which was why we offered them our local initiative that could solve their own national security problem. That's where we are now. Those who are those who are marketing the plan uh, should at least pay attention to know exactly what we're taking to the marketplace. What what we, what we need to do is 75% of the whole task, and the international committee will be able to do the little that concerns them. And so that's 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 where that's the question. That's the answer I want to give. <laughs> yes, um, the big question that people are asking, Tony has answered it uh, considerably, but, but the important thing is this, uh, my, my brother who said he was in uh, Lagos State or New York State or New York State, I didn't see much of evidence, so I'm surprised about that because uh, I would say that the youths of the Southwest have done an enormous amount mm -hmm. of work mm -hmm. in spreading the message. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a problem. But we, we, they decided that we were going to hold a number of rallies. 
And we held the first one in Ibada. About 1.2 million people were present. And uh, we thought, wow, we can never get it bigger than this. After all, Ibadan is our biggest city. From days later, we held another one in Abelkuta, and it was a lot bigger than the one. And everybody concluded, well, Abelkuta has stolen the prize. Nobody can ever have a rally as big as that again. And then we went to Ojibwa, and Ojibwa was much bigger than Abelkuta. And uh, Akura was much bigger than Ojibwa, and uh, Adwekiti uh, came out surprised, surprised the whole of the Yoruba nation. Uh, uh, people came from all over Yoruba land to all these rallies. Uh, young people were traveling around, mobilizing themselves, spreading the message. And as I'm talking to you now, there are many of our civic organizations that are going from village to village, telling the people, forming local committees to, to spread the message. So, and I know the same, uh, in fact, uh, on the uh, on a more radical scale, uh, has been happening in the homeland of the Igbo people. They have, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, gone into the, uh, this spirit of confrontation, but gradually I'm sure that they will get to know that if we do this together, the way it has been done in other places, and we are able to evolve one voice that we can go before the United Nations and other international institutions, uh, agencies with, we can win. We can win. As Tony had said, we have succeeded in getting the, the rich countries of the world to refuse to sell guns to Nigeria. And what was their reasoning? The reason is that we know they have been coming to tell us that they are going to use the guns, the weapons, to fight terrorism. But we now know that they are not using the guns to fight terrorism. They are using the guns to kill their own people, their own citizens. And so we will not sell guns to them anymore. That's a major victory for us. A very major victory. And uh, we have also reached a point, uh, after we made this statement, that Nigeria is now a disputed project. A disputed project. And anybody who loans money to Nigeria, who gives any loan to Nigeria, is taking a big risk. Because we who are disputing the Nigerian project, may in some future time, face the, lo uh, the, uh, the loan givers and tell them, we want you. We gave the money to the wrong place. Uh, and so now, the general picture is that Nigeria is finding it extremely difficult to raise loans anywhere. Uh, and the Nigerian situation is getting worse and worse at home. Uh, the Nigerian Naira is plunging. It is now close to 580 Naira to the dollar. Only a year ago, it was 380, 390. And some people are now jokingly predicting that, uh, that the Naira will soon be 1,000 to the dollar. It can't happen. Meanwhile, the government is well, the government has never really desired to control the violence and insecurity. But insecurity is now going far, far beyond their their worst expectations. So much so that even the Sultan of Shoboto said two or three days ago that the killings in Nigeria are being grossly underreported. That's a very big one. And uh, southern parents are beginning to, with, uh, to withdraw their, their youth from universities of, in the north. In fact, state governments, state governments, 
are helping to put vehicles on the way to go and evacuate the students from their states from some northern universities. The country is already in, in the direction of, the, of, of uh, disintegration. And uh, I'm not saying that we are entirely responsible for it. The circumstances themselves make Nigeria increasingly untenable, unsustainable. And so we have uh, our, we, we have our opportunity in our hand. All we need to do is to increase our spread of the message to our people. Tell our young men not to put themselves in the, in the hands of danger. Don't go and attack the police and the military. We don't need to do those things in order to win our states, in order to win our sovereign countries. We don't. We can win our sovereign countries the way that it has been done uh, is in, the, in some other parts of Nigeria. So we must reach our young people everywhere. They are all our children. For so an old man like me, those are my children and grandchildren. I'm paying it pains me heavily when I hear that they are dying. I don't want them to die. So we must tell them, well, you don't have to die. You must live for your country. You are yes. the ones who are going to build your country of the future. Yes. Don't go and risk your life and die. No. Who is going to build your country when you die? Hmm. So those are the things we need to do. We need to come out frontally. Uh, Nina needs to come out frontally to attack to attack the idea, or the tendency uh, present in some parts of Nigeria among the youths of the uh, nationalities that are members of uh, Nina. Uh, the tendency towards Attempting to achieve success through violence, we can achieve the success otherwise. I'm, uh, I'm sure that the pressures that we are mounting, I know it is not that we are not guessing. I know that the pressures that we are mounting are, 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 are beginning to have an impact. Or, a country to, have to face the open denial by many governments of the sale of arms to them is a very major, major impact. Or a country to find it difficult to, to raise loans is a very major impact. We are reaching a point at which uh, the governments of Nigeria may not be able to pay low, uh, salaries to public servants. And we are also reaching a point at which some of the governors will begin to have courage. The governor of Rivera State has astounded all of us. Uh, the, governor, the government of uh, uh, Niger, uh, of the River State has astounded all of us by making a law prohibiting the federal collection of VAT taxes in, in a river state. Uh, many of us are already telling our governors what governor can do that and you do that for us too. Yes, in, uh, the tires are already falling off the vehicle. The tires are already falling off the vehicle. All we need is to keep on the pressure, and the vehicle will, grind, will go will finally grind and grind to a halt. I know we can win. I am sure we can win, and I pray that we will win. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Prof. And uh, I know everyone is, is excited about the Million Man March, the Venus Million Man March that is bringing all of the Alliance territory together. And we are going to be in New York starting September 14th to the 20th. 
And uh, we're actually going to have the, the March and the 14th and the 15th. And uh, Prof wanted to see if you can talk about how we are unifying and the call to unify everyone behind this march so that it will be wildly successful. If you could speak on that, we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, uh, rally, march, and so on, that is the province of our youth. And I want to thank you, our people, that we are already putting on uh, the arrangement. Uh, and all the other leaders of Nina are very Nina, so get their people in the diaspora, especially in America, to rise up and join the rally. I've spoken to our leaders in the Middle West, and uh, they are ready. They are sending messages to other people. You will see more and more of uh, middle belt people in that. We are going to exceed the million man max. We probably will go on as far as uh, two million, three million people in front of the United Nations, 14th of uh, September. But I must leave, leave it to you to make your arrangements. Uh, as your father, I expect. That is, uh, you announce to us now your arrangements, and uh, we can help you to spread the message. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. What about those in the other continents? Can they fly in and support if they are able to? Are we just inviting everyone to come since it's such a pivotal point? Yeah, the message that uh, you are in that. Oh, no, you are in the most of the can you please mute everybody? Can you just mute everybody, please? Yes, everybody. Sir, I, I muted her already. Sorry about that, Prof, if you can go ahead. That's all right. That's it. So the ball is in your culture. Our younger people tell us how are you going to put it together to get 5 million people in front of the United Nations headquarters. Okay, folks, you heard it here first. He's saying five million. That's a call to everyone that is in this room and those who are not here. So, um, Prophet Kintoya is calling for five million people to show up. Everyone around the globe uh, is as you should be. You, you will be in bacon because it's your future that is at stake. It's your heritage. It's your culture. It's your freedom. It's your religion. It's your progress. That is what is a state. So thank you very much, Prof. Kintoya. If you have uh, final words, if you want to, uh, we'll take a couple of questions uh, from people. If you still have time to stay with us. I don't know if Tony is still here as well. I see Tony is still here. So we'll take a couple of questions and uh, they'll let us know when, when they're leaving. And um, we're really excited to have you here. So um, Donald, I think you were tracking who raised their hand first. If you can call the first person, that would be awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, receiving me. So I want to thank Baba for being there for us. So I'm a Tajibin Ade Jami. I'm a secretary of uh, Nigeria, uh, not, not uh, um, American Mega Rally, uh, uh, Yoruba uh, Nation American Mega Rally. So, my Hello? Joseph, if you unmute your line, I will remove you. So, so my question is, uh, what else are we need to do in order to make sure that uh, Nigerian government is not receiving loan as they are used to? Because the way it is now, it's like uh, they are taking our resources for the loans they are getting from international community. What do we need to do in order to stop that answer? That's my question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's a progression. Already people are hesitating to burn them loans. People are pointing out to them, your country says you are a disputed debt enterprise. So lending money to use risky. 
we must continue to make it appear more and more risky. And uh, the the million man march before the United Nations uh, sends a message more powerfully than anything we have done before. You can be sure that after that, it will become a lot more difficult for the United uh, for for Nigeria to raise loans abroad. It will become more difficult also to have any any nation ab abroad dealing with Nigeria as it is. So we need to make that powerful show of of uh, of rejection of rejection of Nigeria. And the world will begin to listen more and more to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much um, for that. Um, for that am, I to leave, am I allowed to leave now? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We are so thankful that you were able to join in and that the um, and that the uh, lines were very good, so that we could hear you clearly. That was just such a great and motivating. Uh, speech for everyone and the answers and we know that we are going to succeed and everyone here just wants to say thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. So we I'm will continue now. We have uh, Tony and Natty. I'm going to check on you to see if you have any more time to spend with us or if you need to leave also. Yeah, I, I will leave in a short while. Uh, the one that I will add questions. to Go ahead. Yes, I could take a couple of questions. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in traffic. <laughs> okay, well, that works out well for us then. Don't know that you get called the next person. <laughs> uh, so, as, so as it were, we... I have two that they might... Hold on, uh, Donald. Let, let me just add something to... Let me just add something to what uh, Prof had uh, talked about in terms of... Um, the, the significance of our going there, our message, the, the, uh, we're in touch with the rally organizers to craft our messaging so that the international community that will be looking at it will be able to take away exactly what we're saying. Because if we go, if we go uh, saying some kinds of things that don't uh, tie into what they are able to do for us, they must know that we have rejected that union they must know we are insisting on on a transition and referendums because that transition settles their mind about uh, you know uh, anarchy. That's their biggest fear, anarchy in Nigeria. So if it is Ninas that is coming to say we can't proceed to another election, they must get it very clearly that we reject further elections under the if we craft our messages, our, our message for the rally, so that. When they look at it, it may be five main things we will say that uh, will tie together. If these people are saying they reject the union as defined by this uh, imposition, if they say they reject further elections under that constitution, and they are saying they want to go to transition, if they are saying they, they, that it's referendum now and nothing else, let it, let, it, let it register in their head that that's what we are saying. Because if we come saying, give us a good republic, Give us a TV republic. You know, yes, it serves in saying that we are fed up with Nigeria, but we will be confusing our message. Let them know that we are organized. Let them know that there will be a transition to avoid anarchy. Let them know that it is a referendum we are asking for and that we are saying nobody should support it, that we are not going to election, neither should they support further elections. They've managed South Africa before. They managed the transition from apartheid. So they have an idea of the process, which is what Nina's carefully crafted into our demands, into the five points of demand. So the organizers will have to, uh, you know, will liaise a bit more in the background to to clear up, um, to you know, to clean up our message so that it can tie into 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 what they can do, not the things that uh, you know just uh, pop out of our heads and we just uh, go throwing it uh, at them there. You know, that's, that's what I wanted to add, add, add to that. If we do it well and they're able to take out uh, the demand, yes, the number is good, but they should be able to they should be able to come to the conclusion that this is what these people want 
and that that thing they say they want ties into their own, uh, you know, uh, framework to be able to solve. You know, if, if for instance, you come and say you want Biafra, without a map, the UN has not opened any, any file. I can report to us authoritative. The UN has not opened any file concerning Biafra since after 1967 to 70 to date. They know that our people in the past are fed up with the Union of Nigeria. Then what is the map of that Biafra that they want now? Have they discussed it with their neighbors who are involved in that map? It is self-determination that we want. It is independence that we want. We must, we, we have to put a process to it. We are not doing it in, in terms of, uh, we are not uh, saying we are going to behave everybody so that we can have it. Because if you solve your own, and the other people have not solved their own, we have to see that the international community will have to see us as civilized, as people who are able to manage their affairs, people who are able to discuss around the big tables and take away what will solve their problem. So the, the organizers will have to have it, they have to bear in mind that uh, we can, it, is, it is called self-determination. That's their language. If we say we don't want to go to another election, that puts a time frame to it. If we say it's, it's, a, it's a referendum that we, they will know we're not uh, working towards anarchy because we have offered transition. Those are the things I thought I, 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 I want to add so that uh, the organizers can help all of those who be on ground at the time will have it uh, in mind, you know. Let's go to the next question, please. No, no, can you bring up the next person? And I'm going to make this announcement again. If you unmute your line, because we've said this several times, we will simply remove you. We are not going to continue to do that. You will just be removed. So please, watch your lines. And if you're going to ask a question, you cannot have iPad or iPhone. You must have your name. Everyone that's asking a question must have your name. So please, uh, Donald, if you can uh, call on the next person, that would be great. Prince Ayatunde, are you there? Prince Ayatunde is not there, so we move to Bukina or listen. Bukina, they can go ahead. Bukina, sorry. Yeah, um, thank you very much um, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I think we might not really have enough time to ask questions. I have um, Mr. Chris, I think, but can you go? Can you ask a question on my behalf? Mr. Chris Akimbadi. Mr. Chris, you can go ahead and meet yourself. Mr. Chris, you are muted. Please, can you unmute yourself? Okay, good afternoon, everyone in the house. My name is Chris Akimbadi from Toronto, Canada. Yeah, the, the question that he, that he wants to know is, uh, is, is regarding the youth. How do you incorporate youth element into this this program that you are doing? Because in Nigeria now the youths are already it's like they are there, there's no coordination and uh, everything is just somehow. So he wants to know. He has he has been interested in knowing a program for them. That's his own question. So I don't know if you have any explanation how you want to build youth into this program. Thank you. Very quickly, very quickly. The meeting I'm coming from now had in attendance the leaders of the youth networks from this part of the country. So that uh, it's not something uh, that we, 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 we make contacts with the, with the leaders of uh, the ones we could identify, the leaders of uh, NSAT, as far back as the time they were doing their NSAT, to get them, they gave up, we, they had 40 names to tell you that we had them at the center of our plan. They had 40 names. That they, that they were going to put as signatories to the Constitutional Force Majeure. A few hours, almost past midnight of uh, the day before the announcement, some of them reasoned that at that time, the government was looking frantically dead because the government never really identified who organized that entrance up to that time. And so, if they, if they trusted us enough at the time to make themselves known to us and to put their names down, 
that uh, it might it might jeopardize the entire their participation if they sign off and then uh, begin because their network of organizing can easily be identified by government. Uh, since some of them were also seen uh, in course of the commotion, but their roles were not known. And so it became the decision on the on the, the night overnight of that 16th of this, that's the 15th that became 16th at about midnight. They called us to say, please, don't uh, pull our names out. We'll be endangering the project because the government will be more interested since they have criminalized what we are doing. And they say they are looking for many of us. You know, the government declared them wanted that we're doing all kinds of things, blocking their accounts. They said if they will be more effective uh, within our means if their names are not uh, listed in that manner so that they can they can continue to use uh, their anonymity to our to the advantage of uh, the whole project so we're connected with them at that level then the nationalities we also got them to bring uh, forward their their youth uh, you know, there are youth wings. There are summits, as I speak with you, there are summits that have been planned. Just use summits to bring it closer to them, even in form of town halls across uh, the, the alliance uh, territories. So I, I, I'm just assuring you that uh, we, with the youth are being incorporated, even using the church networks, all the youth, uh, because all the organizations that have youth wings, uh, we were we, we were using them to also uh, use, reach those youth, to let them know that this is their future, that it's been, uh, you know, uh, salvaged, so that they can, they, they have to take their position in it, but not they're dealing with it as uh, something that uh, some people have to do and bring back, uh, bring down to them. They are the ones who have to do it, they want to guide them and incorporate them. You know, that's that's what it is. They are fully, uh, they are being incorporated uh, as fully as we can, uh, as we can most. Thank you. Okay, okay. and Chris, if I may add to that, um, um, they are also working on, um, I could say, what plans do we have? We also have plans of uh, going into high institutions, getting with the student union governments, making them understand what the uh, inner strategy is all about. We have to be able to spend time. We're going to run things like uh, our whole meetings with these uh, uh, leaders in uh, high institutions. And with them, when they understand what they think, they'll be able to reach out to the students that we're going to. Because we're actually working on having a very strong use for um, breaking the lockdown moving forward. Thank you. And the next person in line we uh, This is Prince Ayotunde. I did prior, you called me, but you did not permit me to unmute. Sorry, before I go. You need to unmute me. Yes, sir. Okay, hang on, hang on a second. Okay, everybody, uh, time out. Have a time out. And uh, we will call you, uh, uh, Donald, if you can make note of that. I'm going to bring up Shayun right now because we have uh, one of our leaders that, that uh, need to make uh, a comment. And as I explained in the beginning, for those of you who have just joined, uh, joined us, this is Nina's uh, Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance of Self Determination, which is the alliance from the Middle Belt to the South. That is has um, really put together the plan that we are all working under. That's all of us in the alliance territory. So you guys are all welcome, and uh, we will be pausing from time to time uh, to let our leaders um, have a discussion, and then we will uh, continue. So Shaun, if you can please introduce the next speaker, that would be fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, permit me to invite the chairman of Elan, um, Professor Wale Adenio. Uh, he has one or two minutes message to all your self determination group. Chairman, if you are there, you can unmute yourself and speak, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Jean. I want to commend, uh, commend um, Professor Van Jackie Tony Nadi 
and all leaders of Minas for the wonderful, the wonderful work you've been doing. Uh, I want to appeal. My appeal goes straight to all the Yoruba self-determination groups in the U.S. By whatever name your organization is called, I appeal to you and I plead with you to please cooperate with Minas. The one million man march of 14 September to the 20th is a Minas project, bringing peoples, all the indigenous peoples of the four zones earlier mentioned together. Uh, there is strength in numbers. There is strength in unity. I therefore appeal to you to please join hands with Ninas. Uh, whatever you want to contribute, uh, at whatever level you think you want to come in, please get in touch with Ninas so that you can be adequately incorporated into the planning and the execution of this million man march. And um, we are not making, I mean, there's no discrimination whatsoever. All Yoruba groups are welcome. All Yoruba groups are welcome. And everybody will be given equal treatment. Please, I plead, no rivalry, no competition. It's just cooperation, collaboration to ensure that we all recover our sovereignty and get out of this prison called Nigeria. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so very much. That is so important. And that's one of the things that we really want to be able to uh, uh, to talk about here. Uh, because, uh, again, for those of you who were not here earlier when we talked about it, uh, I'm sure you uh, remember when the president, Buhari, made mention to the dot, how they had isolated the dot and defeated the dot. Well, all of you here who are part of leaders, you are the dot expander. Right? We have expanded that dot to where it is all the way from the middle belt to the south. The majority of the people that are in the country, the indigenous people of the country, and I dare say there are lots of uh, uh, indigenous people in the, in the far north that are indigenous and are not part of this craziness that's going on in our country right now. Uh, but that's really important for us to come together from the perspective of having our voices, having our voices be so much uh, louder, having economies of scale, right? And just really working when you work together, you have that collaboration. It makes it so much better for us later on when we are in our own space and control our own destinies. We will have that. Um, already in place because we're already doing it. So welcome everyone again. And uh, uh, Donald, if you want to call on, um, I think it was it was in Langeru, uh yes. to ask a question. Oh, yes, I am have, yeah, Tony is still with us, and so uh, he can uh, answer some questions. Right. Go well, ahead. Is, let the question be asked. Um, I'm going to ask the question now. This is Prince Ayotunde. I was called earlier, but... Yes, go I ahead. Have fun... okay. Go ahead and oh. ask your question, please. Go okay. ahead. Thank I you. have uh, a question and a suggestion for the rally. So the question was supposed to go to Professor Banji Akitoye, um, being uh, that we were informed that... Probably be during the uh, General Assembly meeting. So we don't know any update on that if they're still coming because we are already making preparation to make sure that we're able to, know, to go in to the meeting. So we don't know if they're still coming or not. That's number one. So my suggestion in reference to the rally, I think we can all get to the um, United Nations building early enough and block their entrance to the building to create an attention for us. That would be a very good thing. So that's what I wanted to suggest. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that uh, suggestion. And everyone will be getting uh, information. So please, if this is the first time that you are attending Alina's meeting, do you please put your information, your phone number, and your email address in the chat 
and we'll be keeping you informed. We'll also be providing the information for Ilana Omojua, so you can reach him directly. Uh, the Nina's information has all, is already going out. Namashun to um, also be providing uh, the Ilana information. Uh, in the Yoruba directorate, I haven't seen them. There's so many people I can't you know, see everyone. They're going to provide that information. The bottom line is we're all coming together. We're all going to be working under the Nina's umbrella. We're already pulling things together uh, to make it work. And that's what's going to be important. So please provide your phone number and your email address. We'll pull you into the right um, into the right platforms that you need to be on. And you'll be getting all the information straight from uh, Professor, straight from Tony. You know, he sends out information every day. That the videos, there's all kinds of things that you can utilize uh, to actually be able to move uh, uh, this um, uh, this uh, movement towards uh, success. Okay, thank you very much. And um, where is Donald? If you can bring yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah, the next person to um, ask a question will be calling at the link. Are you there? Yeah. Be before the next question come, please. Uh, there are the operational details, some of the, the information, all the information relating to the, the match uh, are available in the platforms uh, that have been provided. So people just need to go there. But there are certain uh, aspects of the information that become operational details that should not be disclosed there. For instance, this last suggestion about coming and blocking, yeah, there might be people reporting to people here so those are not uh, some, of, some of the things you can, because if they know you are coming to do that, because you are discussing it in this open uh, open forum, of course they're going to uh, try to provide against that. And uh, the information relating to the movement of the leaders of, uh, you know, uh, leaders, uh, we can put that uh, out too early. You know, the, the system is G3, the system doesn't know what to do, they don't know where this uh, massive uh, thing is coming from. And so uh, there are all kinds of other back channel, uh, you know, uh, mechanisms of uh, discussing those aspects that the that the system could want to work, uh, you know, with to impede in some way or the other. That's uh, that's what I want. And then the matter of uh, everybody being uh, welcome. Yes, our 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 focus should be presenting ourselves to the global community. The reason the U.S. listened to us in 2019. At the time we went to tell them that ISIS had come to our place at the invitation of our government was because they saw we, we came as that alliance. They saw that these 300 and something ethnic nationalities for the first time have organized themselves in a manner that uh, presents a handle to a very complex problem they've been scratching their head about. And so on this occasion, imagine how what impact it will make. Half of our, our task is done if we can come out as a as an alliance of the rest of Nigeria isolating the source of our problem, isolating the people creating the problem and the constitution by which uh, they've been operating. And so everybody is welcome, not just the Yoruba organization, the Joe organizations, the Igbo organizations, the Yoruba organizations, the Tivo organizations, everybody who is from that alliance. It doesn't matter what you were doing before. Now we're going before the people who can, who can put their feet down, who can help solve the problem the way it will be less injurious to us. So this is the time to, you know, put aside all of whatever was the quarrel before and come as long as from that uh, a part of uh, within the plan that has been drawn up, what message are we presenting? How are we to conduct ourselves? Will the, will the people watching us, you know, come to the conclusion that we are together in this one demand work? And, and we want to head to referendum and not the election under that constitution. So that, I'm just pointing this out to say that everybody from everywhere is welcome. But it's not uh, in that it, 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 it is not this uh, rally that will be used to show who is uh, uh, doing what different from the other. Let us present a common front uh, before this uh, global audience, so that the world can go to bed that same day, realizing that uh, something has given that the owners of Nigeria have rejected that Nigeria and they insist now on a referendum, uh, uh, you know, and that they organize in a process that the world can let uh, with. I think uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to uh, add, you know.
Thank you very much for that, Tony. And yes, um, we are a peaceful process. This is a lawful process. And so, of course, we're getting the permits, we're working with the uh, authorities uh, in New York, and we're mapping out, you know, the route, we're working with them to make sure that everything is done on the up and up. Uh, we don't have to be confrontational for us to get our message across. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that everyone needs to understand is that confrontation doesn't always get you to where you need to be. And we are going to go about this, have a show of force, be able to communicate the information in a very professional manner, display our culture, display our resolve, and, and uh, make it clear that we're not going anywhere. The only way that we are going to be quiet is when our sovereignty is restored. And when the future of our children is no longer in danger, when the lives of the indigenous Nigerians from the Middle Belt to the South are no longer taken for nothing, when comments similar to um, one human, uh, one indigenous Nigeria is equal to, you know, 100 humans is equal to uh, one cow, it's no longer hurt. Okay? And the reason I'm saying this is I want to give you some numbers. Think about this. A hundred million, over a hundred million Nigerians living in poverty. Did you hear me? Over a hundred million Nigerians living in poverty. Do you want to know how many children are in that hundred million? Let's even say it's 40 million. Do you know what is happening to them? From the middle belt of the south, we have great intellectual horsepower, and we've seen it. Look anywhere in the world. Check out who is on top. Look at the top, and you will see the names from the middle belt of the south. If you starve the brains of 40 million children so that they don't develop to the level that they should, what are you doing to the future? I want you to put that image in your head. Every time you're thinking to yourself, I am tired, I can't move forward. Think about those children. No food, wearing rags, with no shelter, no education, no hospitals, no healthcare system, no good rules, no good water, and being hunted. And then you will find the resolve to say no more. Our future must be guaranteed. Our land must be guaranteed. Our ancestral history must be guaranteed. And we move forward. We are moving forward. We're not going backwards. Failure is not an option. And we will not accept that. Donald, if you can call the next question. Hello, Tony. I don't I see you there. Yes, I am here. Good evening. I'm in Lagos and I'm from APT State, but I reside in Lagos. Actually, some of the points I wanted to talk about has been talked about. Being able to reach out to students, then we need all our social media, um, the YouTubers, people that have millions of followers on social media. We need them involved because we need the youth. Now, the other time, one of our brothers said that maybe back home, he was surprised that people at home, you know, they, we're not talking about this agitation the way the people abroad are doing that. No, we do. But remember, we are home, we are serious. And we rely so much on people abroad, but they are our home. Right. Now, back home, I tried to strike a conversation in some places like, even the market, like Marina, you know, in my office and several other places like that, you'd be surprised that everybody has awareness of what is going on and they want it to succeed. People love it. They want it. People are eager for it. We know. We are aware. Now, the person that seems like represents us before, that we are looking up to four days ago, suddenly they open up, everything seems to come down. Sunday is in their custody, family is in their custody. There is nobody speaking for us. So there is nobody that comes every day to show that our court is still protected. You know, we still, still have new guys in mind. You know, it's still our land. We're still fighting for it. We're not supposed to, to give up. So that's why it seems that thing back home is calm. We are not calm. We're expecting action. I will believe so much. I will pray always for Professor for God to lengthen his age for us so that we get to freedom at the end of it. 
Catherine, we need to carry the youth along. Students are good, yes. How about the YouTubers? How about our musicians? You know, people that have millions of followers on social media, please get them involved. Okay, let us so round up now. Don't, don't, okay, okay. We need to I'll please send you a message. Please read my message as well. Okay, yeah, I put some point in my message. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. you. have absolutely given some great points. Okay, this is a great point. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Everybody here is a freedom advocate. Every single person who have you reached, your family, your friends, about your village, your church, your alma mater, your professional organization, your cultural organization, your cultural leaders. Everybody here is a sign board. Everybody here is a message board. And just because there doesn't appear to be um, ad, what people call agitation does not mean that a lot isn't happening. Because I will recount what uh, Tony and Nadi said and what uh, uh, Prophet Kintoya uh, said as well about the progress, the things that have been achieved. We are screaming loudly with the messaging that we are sending out, not just in the Nigeria space, but in the international space. Every message is pointed to address what's going on on the ground and to provide that information to the international community as well. And a lot more of that is going to be happening. And that takes all of us. Yes, you are in Nigeria, but you probably know people in the US, even in the New York area, maybe Connecticut, maybe New Jersey, right? You contact them. Have you heard about this? Are you going to be there? Make sure that you're there. Make sure that I see you there. Everybody is a message board. That's the whole beauty of Nina's. Everyone counts. Just like Papa Kintoya said, and Tony and Daddy made it very clear. Individuals, ethnic nationalities, everyone counts. Now, Tony, did you have anything more you wanted to add to that, or? No, 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 not really. Uh, everybody is welcome as long as they are from that alliance uh, block, you know, the alliance territories. You know, everybody is welcome. Key into that proclamation. That proclamation is our central message. Whether you want to do a republic, or you want the Afro Republic, or you want to go to the republic, whatever you want. It is in the transition we get into. It is the referendums that will follow in that transition that will settle everything. The first thing is to get out of the cage. Let's, we are doing a joint jailbreak. Ninas is a joint jailbreak from the caliphate prison called Nigeria. Let us get out of that cage. Then we go into transition and sort out where we want to go by a referendum. It's that simple. So everybody's welcome. To understand that it is that that uh, proclamation that has everything everybody needs, including all the destinations, are contained in. Because once we stop this 1990, once we stop this constitution, the union it creates is at an end. The Nigeria that we are talking about now is at an end, and then we go into a transition during which ref regional referendum to decide what will happen. All the quarrels about where the boundary will be. Will be taken as some who become controversial can go to plebiscite. But let us get out of the cage first because the Fulani are regrouping to come to kill everybody. Yeah. If, 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 we have, if, if because we are quarreling for where to draw the line or who will stand in front, the things that happened in Afghanistan were closer. If the US did not pull out when they pulled out, Afghanistan, we would have happened before Afghanistan. What happened was that the, the, the US pulled out and the Taliban saw a gap of movement. Today, the man in Asorok will be more than glad to throw in the tower because he's also the commander on the other side. That's what the, the, that's what the, uh, the commodore uh, or Laumi was, uh, you know, uh, telling everybody. That's what we went out last Friday to also say, myself and Professor Turaki, that the man who is commander in chief of Nigerian Armed Forces is also, uh, uh, you know, a uh, patron, grand patron of Mieti Allah. Which is Mietiala is responsible for the activities of Fulani Hesmen, as they say, and that our commander in chief had 
dipped hands into the treasury to take a hundred billion naira to give to Mietala that was taking responsibility for the, 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 the for the fourth most deadly terrorist organization on earth. And so, how are we supposed to make a distinction between all of them? Therefore, we see that the Taliban situation in which uh, the government just capitulated, the army capitulated, they have infused our army with all the people that have been pardoning. The, 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 the terrorists, they, they actually caught in combat. They will say they repented and they put them in back in the army. So our military is infused. We are closer to that danger than we realize. And therefore, let us just go in one accord. That proclamation of December 16 is our common position for ending the union that brings us together with these mad people. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, one of the things, if you haven't listened to the video by um, T.Y. Danjima in 2018, you might want to listen to it. He was very precise. He said, do not rely on the armed forces. They collude. They collude. He said that very clearly. And then, how many of you saw the International Criminal Court statement in December, right before the Constitutional Force Majeure was issued. They said that there is reasonable basis to believe that the Nigerian armed forces committed crimes against the people. Goes to the level of war crimes. And they will say, if you unmute again and make noise, I will remove you. So, if you are in doubt as to what's going on, the roadmap is there. And if that doesn't convince you, look at May Lafia and what he said. So we've got countless videos from the area the Northeast. And I'm going to give out some more numbers. The UN this month came out with horrifying numbers, horrifying numbers about how many people has been killed in the Northeast. Are you ready? 350,000 people. 350 thousand people. Let me let that sink in. And while they're sinking in, did you know that over 300,000 Nigerians has fled from Nigeria as refugees into other countries? Did you know that? Did you know that over 4 million have been displaced from their land? and are living in IDP camps. Those are internally displaced people, and they are living in squalor while we're paying terrorists ransom money and not going after them. Has any one of you seen a Fulani herdsman that has been prosecuted? Erufai in February said, that the justice system is just moving so slowly, or we would have been seeing it by now. Well, Harry said, police department, release the names of all of the Fulani husbands that are being prosecuted. That was in February. This is August. We are still waiting. So if you're in doubt, then you're not listening. You're not watching. You need to be crystal clear. Brother Kintoya read the letter a few years ago, coming from the jihadists. It's on the uh, Nina's YouTube uh, channel. You'll find it there. Because what we're talking about isn't herd of farmer conflict. Were there any form of farmers at the NBA? In the places that the Nigerian army has been going, with those farms? Wait. The US government came out clearly stating that they are sharing intelligence with the Nigerian government. How is it they haven't been able to find this terrorist 
that Sheik Gami could find. Auchi governor could find them. Zambara governor could find them, take pictures with them, hand them money, leave them with the guns. And then tell us that we need to treat this Fulani herdsmen who have killed all over 400,000 people with gentleness. What about Miyiti Allah? That said that they're kidnapping and got 100 billion naira. And said that, oh yes, the killings, yes, the killings, but it's revenge killings. Can they show us over 400,000 Fulani, non indigenous to Nigeria, I, I, I might add, that have been killed, that you're doing a revenge killing on? Those are the people that are right in front of the Nigerian government. Why are they not going after them? I'm just talking about what's fair. Where is the equity? Where is the justice? But if one person says something, you're declared wanted or called to the DSS. Why haven't they called me Itiyama? To actually prosecute them, not give them money. Boko Haram, repentant, to give them money, put them in the army. Oh, wait. That happened in Afghanistan. It's a blueprint. So if you're in any doubt, all we're here to do is to talk about what is actually happening. You come to your own conclusion. Ninas has identified the issue. It's the 1999 Constitution. We, the people, could not have made it. Why? Why would we, the people, as brilliant as we were and still are, Make a constitution where in chapter two, we give ourselves all these benefits that we're going to get from the nation. But then in chapter one, section six, subsection six C, we say, oh wait, you can't enforce it. We give ourselves benefits and then we say we can't enforce it and tell the court that they can't hear any cases on that. We must be very stupid people. And then, to even increase our stability, we now say a sitting governor is immune. The president is immune. So how exactly are you going to get your benefits? We are not that stupid. Not even our kids in elementary school would do that. And yet it says we the people. One more. Assets now controlled by the federal government and then the 68th exclusive item list. You want to know how those revenues have been divided? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. Local government areas is one of the factors. And I'm going to ask all of you to go check the local government areas. Add up the South, add up the Far North. Then I'm going to tell you to look at Lagos. Lagos and Kano State started with 20 each. Now Kano State has 44. And Jigawa, which was carved out of Kano State, has 27. Lagos still has 20. So now that means Kano, which is now Kano and Jigawa, it's getting three and a half times just based on local government areas. Next factor, land size. Have you seen the size of the land in the north compared to the south? It doesn't take a blind mind to see that one. Population. Well, according to the latest numbers that they were giving us, they said out of 211 million people, 171 million are in the far north. All of us in the middle of the South, there's only 40 million of us. Remember, these are the factors that are being used to distribute revenue in the country. So when we talk about apartheid, it's in the Constitution. 